next con Images Imágenes, AIDS in the Hispanic Community. Saludos, welcome to Images Imágenes, I'm Miguel Pérez. In Spanish, it's known as El Sida, an epidemic that is killing Latinos at an alarming rate. The numbers speak for themselves. In practically every city and state where Latinos represent a large portion of the population, they represent an even larger portion of the AIDS population. But what are community service organizations doing to combat this terrible problem? What are the obstacles they have to overcome? Does machismo play a role in this? Are there cultural taboos making the fight against this deadly disease more difficult? We know that El Sida is still a taboo subject in the Hispanic community. And if Latinos are still unwilling to talk about it, is that making AIDS prevention a more difficult job, especially among young people and women? Those are just some of the questions we'll be analyzing today with a panel of AIDS experts from the AIDS prevention program at the San Colomba Neighborhood Club, also known as El Club del Barrio in Newark. Irene Rosa is the program director. Carlos Mendez is a health educator at the club. And Vivian Torres directs the club's EJAS program. It stands for Empowering Latinas Living with AIDS Through Self-Love. Welcome to the show. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank you Thanks. for having us. Let's talk about uh, AIDS in the Hispanic community. Um, Vivian, uh, tell us uh, how serious a problem is this? It's very serious, and um, it scares us all the time. That's how, why San Colombo decided to uh, start working on these programs of prevention. Uh, we all know uh, there's no cure for AIDS, so the best thing that we could do is prevent people from getting it. Um, and women and youth are being hit like really hard with uh, this epidemic. Um, Irene, um, the San Colombo Club uh, does, is a multicultural agency yes, it is. and a multi-service agency yes. so that deals with many, many different things. AIDS is just one component. One of the components. You direct the AIDS program. I direct the program. It's titled Stop AIDS, which stands for Skills, Tools, and Prevention on AIDS. Um, we what also, is that all about? And what it is, it's an AIDS prevention peer education program targeting specifically African-American, Latino youth, and Latina women being that the populations that I just mentioned are disproportionately represented um, with the AIDS epidemics and increasing cases. And we um, not only teach them facts about HIV and AIDS and how to protect themselves, but we also talk about skills like self-esteem, communication, um, assertiveness, to equip them with the skills that they need to do something with the information to negotiate safe for sex with their partners. It's not so commonly known in the community, I guess in the general public, not just in the Hispanic community, that uh, it is such a serious problem among women. Exactly, and it's been increasing, it's been affecting women. Um, it's, they're actually, they're one of the highest populations that, have, that are increasing in HIV and AIDS. And the youth, I guess, is, there's still that mentality, like they're young and they're not susceptible, they're not at risk. And that's why we have health educators who are teens who are going and they're talking to other teens on how to protect themselves and that, yes, it does affect them also. And that leads me to Carlos. You're a health educator and you deal with the youth. What is your job like? Um, basically, what we do is we go around to different agencies and community-based organizations and we do prevention and interventions where as we discuss HIV and AIDS and we go through a series of questions and Q&A where we ask questions from the audience and they give us a response and we give them information we ask them about any myths that they might have about the disease and we set them straight and do you find that they're very uninformed about the problem when yes. you talk to them that they don't really know enough as much as they should yes a lot of um, a lot of youth nowadays they don't really they're not really up on the subject and it's surprising that when we go to these different agencies or communities the simple question of what is HIV a lot of people don't know a lot of people are still they confused. Feel, they think HIV. that HIV and AIDS is the same thing. They don't know that HIV is a virus that causes AIDS. Right. And they don't understand the, a lot of technicalities. Not technical, but like if you get infected today, for example, and you go to the doctor tomorrow, you're not going to find out because there's a window period 
which takes about six to 12 weeks before you start developing the antibodies. And another thing is that they don't, a lot of people don't know which ways they can get it. They still believe that they can get it by drinking out of another person's glass or sitting next to somebody or kissing somebody or hugging somebody, which is not true. Mm -hmm. And, and so there's a lot, that creates a lot of fear, right? Yes. yes, it does. And the success of those these programs in San Colomba, honestly, I have experienced it myself. It comes from using people from the community because la, mm -hmm. the participants from Entre Amigas are women from the right, right the community right from uh, downtown Newark, uh, people, women that are known in the neighborhood, so they could stop anybody in the, coming in the building in the laundromat. Because I was asking Carlos in the way here, like. He never thought that he was going to do prevention work in the spots where he's doing it because people have the myth and the wrong ideas about AIDS. So educating guys and, and, and youth like, like Carlos and the other health educators is very important because they will have the right information and they will confront people with the right information. So that way the fears against AIDS are not like what they're not supposed to be. And, and the AIDS patients, uh, do you help them try to uh, convey the fact that they're not the contagious uh, uh, to other people, uh, do, like for example, I know that we're going to be talking to a young man on the telephone who didn't even uh, contact, uh, get, in con get the disease, disease. from, from uh, sex. He got it through a blood transfusion. Right. Uh, tell me about his case. We're going to call him David. He's on the phone. We're going to call him. That's not his real name. We're going to call him David. Right. First of all, I, w I want to state the fact that is that a lot of people think that the people that have AIDS and that contracted it through drugs or sex, those are the people that deserve to get it. Mm -hmm. That's their punishment and people who are who got it through blood transfusion is the one that we're supposed to be more sympathetic to, and it's not so. Um, AIDS is a deadly disease that we wish that no one would have ever gotten it. But David, um, actually Vivian met him first, and he was going to be a health educator for our Project RAP program last year. Um, his father has been actively involved in many community-wide activities and trying to get support. Um, been to support groups throughout the agencies, different agencies in Newark, reaching out, I guess, for support somewhere, and I guess he's found that comfort zone at St. Columba. And um, David has actually, one of the great people that we call who's a youth that, that tries to get actively involved and share his message on how he got it and how important it is for other youth to protect themselves, because if you're engaging in high-risk behaviors, whether it's the blood transfusion or any other thing, you're, you're at risk. I mean, so does David actually, well, let's, let's have David tell us. David, do you hear us? Yes. Uh, you're 15 years old, right? 16. 16. You turned 16. And, and you got this through a blood transfusion. Yes, I did. And uh, do, what do you tell your friends now when you uh, go out and talk to friends of yours about AIDS? Uh, what, what have you learned from the Colombo Center? Well, uh, I just learned there's a lot of people you could talk to about it. Yeah. And that they're there to support me. And you feel, you feel like you get support from them when you go there? Yeah, I get a lot of support. Mm -hmm. That makes you feel good? Yes, it does. And, and I understand you have uh, you had a little brother who also had the AIDS uh, virus. Yeah, but he passed away. And he also got it through a blood transfusion? Yes, he did. When did he die? Yeah, two years ago. And, and did you both get the blood transfusion at the same time, David? Yes, we did. Mm. So I imagine you think about your little brother all the time, right? Yes, I do. I miss him a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, there must be counseling involved when, when uh, someone has someone who died from AIDS is that part of what you do also? We don't do direct, like, I guess, like clinical counseling. We offer more like support groups where we have people that are infected, affected, have gone through the same experience as David, for example, and they sit there and they share their experience. And it's a lot of help because it well, affects you. Right there. There's a lot of psychological factors that can affect you. You know, you think about your brother all the time, and you know that you're living with the virus, and then you think about, well, you know, maybe something it's going to happen to me too. Mm -hmm. I have experienced, like, um, a lot of beautiful moments with uh, part of my, some of my clients because they worry about each other a lot. Like uh, David's father, when he knows there's an agency providing some kind of services, he'll come and tell me, you know, so I could send other clients to get the same services. And it, it is very important to do that. Mm -hmm. Network among us, you know, and, and we share information about natural stuff, natural like vitamins, natural mm -hmm. the, Holistic uh, medicine. Yeah, alternative me methods to stay healthy. So David, how, how, what's your state of mind nowadays? Uh, do you feel good about, uh, about uh, the fact that you're living with this uh, disease or uh, are you fighting it? Do you think you, you're going to be with us for a long time? Yes, I do. That's great. All right. That's great. So obviously the Colombo Center is working for David. Yes. And that's what it's all about. There's right? many other people in our community. David, thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure having you on the phone with us today.
Right, uh, I'm you. glad you had a few minutes to share with us, okay? Okay, thank you. And live a long life. All right. Okay. <laughs> thank you, David. Bye. Bye. Vivian, tell me about your program, uh, Deals with Women. Yes, my program is, um, it's been a dream. It's been a dream that I had for many years working with the Latino community because I know for a fact, uh, being, had worked the system truly, that um, the Latinos, the Latino population has like a lot of problems trying to get uh, services and uh, because of the language barrier, because of the... Well, there's a problem in the Hispanic community. People don't even want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about AIDS, yes. And, and they feel like, like uh, that uh, they're going to look, be, be looked look down, down and uh, they're going to be treated different if they mention AIDS. Uh, and San Colomba has opened a lot of doors, especially for a lot of women. Uh, they, my program is based on respeto y confianza. We respect, respect everybody and, and trust anybody and trust. that comes in my, in my groups. Whatever we say there, whatever we talk there, stays there. Um, we cry, we laugh together. I mean, it, it's, it's become like a, like a family. And the ones from Entre Amigas, that Irene, that they graduated from Irene's program, they're health educators. So they're taking upon themselves to come with ideas and go to the community and give all this information now. Now, Entre Amigas is a different program. Entre Amigas is part of the Stop AIDS program. Where it has two components. The first component is Project RAP. Which we should is say Entre Amigas means between friends. Between yes. friends. Project RAP stands for Reinforcing AIDS Prevention and is the adolescent component. And the Latina woman component is called Entre Amigas, which means among friends. And you were saying before that uh, there's a lot of fear in our, in our community, in the Latino community, in terms of HIV and AIDS. I remember when the ladies first entered the Entre Amigas, where they undergo like, like about 90 hours of trainings on HIV and AIDS, and now a lot of people will look at them and say, well, why are you in the program? Is, you know, do you have it? Does someone you know have it? You know, and they immediately think that either you have it and that's why you're taking the initiative to learn about HIV and AIDS. And it's not that so, even if you don't know anyone, that we should be educated, all of us, especially right. the Latino community. Yeah. So those of you who are in the program, like yourselves, who teach, I, I know you are HIV positive because you were on my show uh, on this program yes. last, week, last year, but uh, you're not. I'm not. And you're not. So um, if you're not HIV positive, do you feel like because you're involved in the AIDS issue, in the AIDS prevention program, that they discriminate uh, with you, on you too also? They, they, do, they, do they look at you like maybe she has AIDS, maybe I should stay away from I'm her? I'm sure they do. Do, do you feel that? I, I, I really feel it, not only in terms of uh, HIV and AIDS, but if I have a lot of homosexual friends and immediately think, well, she must be a lesbian and she must be this, and it's not so. There's a big saying in the Latino community that says, Dime quien con, al, con quien anda, te diré quien eh. And it's basically that, that mentality you know, that's, part, that's part of our tradition where we believe it, but we take it to an extreme. Mm -hmm. Not that it's wrong, but if we take it to the extreme, it's not so. Mm -hmm. So you've, you've learned, you know, to, to, I guess, adapt to, like, the different things. I'm, I'm playing the role of translator here today. It uh, means uh, tell me who you hang with, and I'll tell you who you are. Who you yes. are, right. Okay. Whoever I see you with, this is, this is who you are. An you indication know, like, of yeah. who you are as a person. Okay. So, uh, I, I, do you feel optimistic? Are we, f are we winning this battle? Uh, are you, are you do you feel like you're actually accomplishing something with the work that you're doing? I feel very self-satisfied. I mean, the number of ACE cases, it's in, in cumulative, it's up in the hundred yeah. thousands, and we're still counting, sadly, to say that it's been increasing even when they went from the gay cancer to the gay plague to calling it AIDS just in 1990 and we're finding more information about it that it's still still increasing that because Vivian said that there is no cure then prevention is the only key and that's what we're doing if we can go out there we can educate our Latino community we can educate our women our youth on it and how to protect themselves and to do away just with the myths of if I hug Vivian if I give Vivian a kiss I'm gonna put myself at risk which is not so I mean, that's really, really accomplishing And I do me. believe that um, programs like this do help a lot because when we go out and we do these presentations and interventions, um, we go out and we leave with a good feeling. I mean, people come up to you, oh, thanks you for the information. You know, I learned a lot that I didn't know before. And we do believe that we are getting to a couple of people out there. So you leave with a sense of satisfaction? Mm -hmm. Yes, always. Do you also uh, teach, for example, the use of uh, condoms as a prevention yes. method? And, yes. Because uh, to... there's a lot of young people who don't want to deal with that. There are a lot of young people that don't Especially want to Especially young men. Now, how do you deal with that when you go talk to them? Um, okay, well, we have five different modules in our program. One of them does deal with um, the prevention safer of... Safer sex. Yeah, safer sex. And what we do is we go through, you know, we, we have a little 
a, a kit where it has a, a whole bunch of different material in it, and we show them how to put on a condom, how to take it off, other barriers to use, latex protection, everything. Mm -hmm. And they are receptive to this? Yes. They, they, the once they see what the situation is like, you think that they go out and actually do it? At first, they can't believe that we're actually doing this, like, and they'd be like, oh my God, they, you know, they have this with them. But then, you know, they feel comfortable because we, we always try to make it comfortable amongst everyone. So they always end yeah. up being... And I, 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 when I was over there in the other room that I mentioned to you that New Jersey is still number fifth in, in nationwide, you know, like... In um, eight cases. In New eight. Jersey is fifth in the nation. And, and that, you know, like if you come to think about it, nationwide, that's, that's scary. Um, but me, I've been doing presentations for many years and you know I've been working in this field for many years and, and uh, I'm very proud of the youth, you know, like work in, in, in Stop AIDS program because a lot of times people think that just because they're young they don't know, they don't know the right information. They don't care. So it's, it was like a challenge to them and for them to do the presentations and the way that people come up to them and ask them questions, it is amazing because they usually feel like if I'm a grown older person, if I'm an older person I'm going to talk yeah. to this, they don't pay attention to me. They go like, oh no, she don't know what she's talking about, she don't know what I'm going through. Well, so when they see Carlos... It's easier for us to go to give a presentation because if yeah. they see an older person going in, they'd be like, oh, we're, we're just here to be lectured. Yeah. But if they see me coming in or someone my age, they'll be like, we can relate to that person because that person's uh -huh. among our and age. And I think group. it has to do also a lot with the way our style of, of doing the presentations or the training is, we don't, they don't go yeah. in there and they pick up a little book and say well I went through 90 hours of training and this is all the facts they do hands-on they do it um, through role play through um, a different skits through group exercises where the audience actually the people that they're presenting to gets involved in learning the information so I think that style and when they talk about self-esteem and assertiveness that those are things that they can really identify with before you personalize it before you give them the information and it's very important too that that uh, that I need to say that that uh, older people, when they see youth getting involved like they do in this program, you know, sometimes they go like, God, you know, Carlos should be hanging out in the park, playing basketball, doing other things, but then he takes his time to get educated about AIDS and, and help other people. So that is something that means a lot. Mm. And uh, well, the school that I go to, Barringer High School in Newark, the, a lot of the teachers do know that I am a, a health educator, you know, and they congratulate me on that, being that a lot of kids should get involved and a lot of kids don't, and they don't know about it. And they see that I am a high school senior and that I do do my work, I do good in school, and I have time for this too, and they congratulate me on that. And you get a good satisfaction out of it. When you meet people like David, though, and uh, a lot of AIDS patients come into to your center, um, it must be heartbreaking. It, it, it must be depressing sometimes. We uh, also have a, a the meals. tragedies that you Yeah, it is. At St. Columba, we also have a Meals on Wheels program. And we serve Latino cuisine, arroz con gandule, and all oh. the, the chicken and pollo guisado, to families of um, individuals who have HIV, AIDS, and their families. Like, let's suppose if Vivian was living with us, we wouldn't just take the food to Vivian. We take it to Vivian and those that are living with her. And that makes and, a lot of difference. Yeah, and uh, we see our list. And we go through periods where we have like 50 and in one Why is that? Why do you take food to everybody? Because Vivian does, is too sick to cook for everybody? Is because they're homebound, for example. I see. So that, for example, David is one of the our Meals on Wheels clients. And you see the, the numbers decreasing. Like in one month, you can have from clients that you have 50, you can go down to like 40 or below that. And it's just very devastating because sometimes during the intake process, you go into the homes of these people, you, you establish a relationship. And then for you to see the name like crossed off the list, it, it really takes a toll on you and you feel like, but I think that's what gives us the energy to just yes. keep going and, you know, keep preaching and going on here. In a lot of our programs, I mean, and, and uh, this is another issue that I, I'm very happy with San Colombo, is like we help the infected and the affected part of the family. Mm -hmm. Because everybody's affected. I mean, if I'm the sick person mm -hmm. and Irene is my daughter and Carlos is my son, mm -hmm. and they're going to feed me only and I'm too sick to cook for them, they're going to stay hungry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that makes... Um, and, and Rene Deida, the secret director from San Colomba, he's like a good listener and he gets listening to all these rumors that come from the community and this is what we get, this is what we don't get and we try to meet those needs. Well, that's so. what makes you a grassroots organization, you're out there. We were yes. built by the neighborhood and neighborhood individuals came together and actually founded St. Colomba, that's what we call it, Club del Barrio in Spanish. In my program, Ajas, uh, uh, we help like infected, we, I focus on the infected woman. 
so they could get like self-empowered and, and step out of that kind of feeling shame and embarrassed and stuff like that. But then we also see the affected persons from the family, the mother, the grandmother that is left behind with, with grandchildren, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. the mom dies, so this grandmother had have to raise his children, and, you know, like, it's, it's so many things that affect the whole component of the family. And being Latinos, you know, the family is, is, is very yeah, important, yeah. like, issue for us. So mm -hmm. we need to stick together. We have noticed, like, when somebody goes to the hospital and, and Latino family, somebody has a fever in the emergency room, the whole family comes to bring that person that is sick. You know, like, we need to be there. We need to share that. And A sometimes uh, breaks up the family, the kind of nuclear, like, feeling of the family because you're embarrassed, because you don't want to talk about it, because it won't happen to me. So you could imagine, like, somebody like Carlos coming to the family and bringing awareness to his father and his mother saying, I learned about this, mommy and daddy, and you need to hear to me, you know, listen to me, you need and to... And they've done it. And that makes a lot of difference. And it's that. also helpful when, because I have a couple of friends who I know whose parents have died of AIDS, and it's helpful for me and for them because they see that, you know, I know what they're going through. Although I haven't had the personal experience that they have, they know that I'm there to support them and I can tell them about it and, you know, they can count on me and rely on me for whatever they might need. Mm. How are you funded? Where, do, where does the money come from to do all this work? We different funding source. Um, my program is funded by the Department of Health, Division of AIDS Prevention and Control from New Jersey. The state? Yeah. And mine is funded by New Jersey AIDS Partnership, Community Foundation of New Jersey. And it's really hard because when I had my dream about my program, about that safe space for women living with AIDS, um, they didn't think it was a need. They didn't think it was, uh, you know, like something that had to happen. So it was like really hard for us to get funded. So do you think things are better now as far as funding is concerned, that you get more support to do the things you want to do with the AIDS program? Not enough, but it's better, but not enough. Never will be enough. We keep getting cut off in money, you know, like the government keeps cutting off money and writing white money and stuff like that. And it's and a shame. You have to justify everything that you're doing. Of everything. Of course. And the AIDS numbers are not going down. I mean, you know, if anything, they're rising. So it, we need to, like, get more money from different and, and kind of... Um, apply for money from every source. I mean, we communicate, every agency is like, them. yeah. <laughs> so it's, I guess it's always a struggle to keep these programs alive. Yes. Yeah, and that's why it's important for us to have volunteers. We have wonderful volu volunteers in both of our programs who are professionals, who work for different agencies, and they contribute of their time to help us coordinate, put the activities together. So um, how big a staff of volunteers do you have? Uh, volunteers, I th about 10 just for my program. My program just started last year. Roughly about 10, give or take a few. My, my woman in my, in my program, I, I, they're all volunteers, all the participants, and, and uh, there's a sense of ownership in Ajax. I, I would say it's San Colombas program, it's, it's a staff based program, it's Irene's program, it's Vivian's program, it's your program. So you're going to come here and you're going to tell me what is it that you need, what is it that you want it to happen with Ajax, and that's the way that, that's why it's been so successful. So before we forget, if anybody wants to volunteer or contribute any kind of help in or any just way, join in the fight against AIDS and do something. Or get in touch with the St. Columba Club, how do they do that? I got a number here. Yeah, I think it's 624-4222. Area code 201-624-4222. And that's for any kind of assistance, information, support that they may need? Correct. And how often does this happen? How often do you get calls? We receive phone calls daily. Um, for example, people want to know where to go for testing sites, where to go, where they need help with their children, um, for women's services. There's a lot of services available within the city of New York for people who are infected and affected. And a lot of people just don't know that those services are available unless they know where to reach out to. I imagine some of those calls are from people who know that they have been at risk and want to know whether they should be tested. Whether or not. So a lot of the phone calls that we get, yes, are anonymous. And we do keep confidentiality. Mm -hmm. But that's why we feel that it's important for community-based organizations such as St. Columba to offer AIDS prevention um, services because that's where the community people are going to go, to the agencies that are accessible to them, that they feel that they can go and, and have someone that trusts them and respects them. So that's what we're trying to do. I think that, that we've been very successful. We have a great rapport with the people in our community. And I can see from talking to the three of you that you feel a sense of reward from what you're doing. You, you, yes. you enjoy what you're doing. You're proud of what you're doing. Yes. Carlos, tell me about that. What, what kind of, you know, feeling do you get from... Every time I go to my presentations, I finish my presentations, I get a sense of pride because I know that if 
if at least someone heard me, I got through to someone. It doesn't matter if I didn't get through to everybody, but at least one person heard me. And you leave, you leave the presentation, you feel, you feel good about yourself. I always leave with a good feeling, and I'm sure everybody else from the program does also. Mm. And a lot of women that call my, a lot of times they call, even on the phone, they ask me, like, Vivian, how come your programs are so successful? How come all these women keep calling Irene and getting involved in, in a Stop AIDS program and youth? And it's like we um, don't separate. Like our programs and everybody that works in San Colombia is welcome. We always try to have a listening ear to listen to the problems. It might be AIDS, it might not be AIDS. Um, and the sense of, uh, of um, that we're not going to be judgmental makes a lot of difference. If we have a support group, it's like a support group, and, and we don't announce it as an AIDS support group. Because Latino people, you know how they get, they get embarrassed and they go, oh, I won't be going to San Colombo at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday because they know I'm going to the AIDS support group. And I imagine there are people there who go for other programs at the center who find out about your program and bring a friend who may have HIV. Yes. Exactly. And that's how I, I guess they found out about the difference. Because they go there for a specific program. Like yeah. they'll go there, for example, the man tells me about Stop AIDS and they, so it might be a woman living with AIDS. And then I said, well, we have an AIDS program who helps, you know, yes. offer support groups for women. We have a Meals on Wheels program for Latinos and their families and we offer them you know Latino cuisine so even the yeah. senior citizens we have a component on senior citizens and it's, 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 it's beautiful we have to go time is up but I thank you very much you should be proud of what you're doing yeah. we are proud of what you're doing thank you thank very much you. for thank being you for here having us. thank it's you a for pleasure. inviting us next week I'll see you again on another edition of Images Imágenes hasta pronto